three, two, one. Hello, aviation operations students. I'd like to introduce you to Aaron Grusenik. He has a very interesting job and he'll tell you a little bit about how he got there and also speak to some of the points we're gonna be making this week about human resources and creating a healthy work environment. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Heidi. Um, my name is Aaron Grusonic, and <clears throat> I uh, work in uh, athletics at MSU. I'm a clinical psychologist uh, in my background and training, and um, I've been with, uh, with Montana State University um, 11 and a half years now. Started off uh, working in the counseling center on campus, um, working with a variety of different students, and then uh, moved over and worked uh, in the dean, the dean of students' office as the associate dean when they were uh, getting together what, what they call kind of a safety program, reaching out to students who were in danger of possibly harming themselves or others. And uh, what got me uh, into psychology to begin with uh, was uh, the um, idea of doing sports psychology. And um, that's, that's as an undergraduate, that's really what I wanted to do. And doors just opened in different directions uh, for me up until now. And so um, I, I, I am very thrilled and happy to be uh, MSU's first uh, sports psychologist on this campus. And figuring out this uh, job in this position. And um, now that I have two years under my belt uh, doing it, um, I've noticed a few interesting things uh, uh, that I, I didn't anticipate um, uh, when I first joined. I thought I would, I would be working with student athletes and helping them perform better on their teams um, and to perform better as, as athletes. Um, but quickly realized that uh, uh, we uh, house um, within our organization um, probably the most diverse uh, group of students uh, on our campus. Um, we have students uh, um, uh, from across uh, different areas of the world. Uh, we have students from all over the country um, who all come to uh, little old Bozeman. Bozeman's small for me. I know it's big for some, some other students, but um, uh, for, to little old Bozeman and they try to uh, figure out the ropes and uh, figure out our college environment. And I didn't anticipate that um, uh, when, I, when I first took the position in the job over here and um, quickly realized that uh, uh, our teams being as diverse as they are provided some interesting challenges um, for us and for the, for the students. Um, uh, so kind of a typical day, I'll tell you that more about that in a minute, but a typical day uh, for me involves uh, two main things. One is uh, meeting with students uh, individually um, to discuss um, performance goals and expectations. Um, uh, we know that uh, once athletes get to the division one um, level, that uh, they have a lot of talent, they have a lot of good conditioning, they have a lot of skill. And um, at that point, up to 75 or 80 percent of what makes them um, more elite or standing out is, is a mental game of their sport. And so I meet, meet with a lot of students for, for those reasons. And then um, I meet with students uh, who might be struggling um, uh, in their personal lives in some way. And our athletes are um, struggle with the same thing any other college student would, would struggle with, with pressure or um, losses in their life or depression and anxiety and other types of um, mental health concerns. Um, and then I do a bunch of, uh, uh, so that's kind of my individual meetings with students. Uh, then I do a bunch of teamwork and, uh, and work within our organization um, about building healthy teams, setting up structures um, uh, so that the student athletes uh, have an environment that they can thrive in. Um, Going back to that diversity piece, um, uh, we have uh, students from very small towns to uh, very big cities. Um, and uh, like I said, every corner of the globe and uh, every single person uh, in, uh, comes to Bozeman and experiences Bozeman in a different way. Some feel completely at home, uh, some feel uh, uh, out of sorts. Some people feel uh, based on how they look or their skin color that they stand out. 
and they feel more afraid. Um, and we've been trying to negotiate over the last year and a half uh, how to help our students feel comfortable, uh, uh, help our students uh, who come from small, uh, tiny towns in Montana, uh, how they can feel comfortable in the, uh, in the bigger environment, uh, which is Bozeman, navigating traffic and, and, uh, and things like that. And then uh, with our international students, uh, helping them learn the ropes just with American culture um, and the culture that's within Montana itself, which is its own unique uh, culture. Um, one of the things that I think makes athletics uh, really fun uh, to work in, in dealing with these, uh, this diversity and these differences is that we recognize that uh, in order to have a highly functioning uh, team, the best team, uh, you need a diversity of ideas, you need a diversity of skills, and you need a, uh, a diversity of people who can all kind of come together and play their own role. Um, you think about basketball and we need players that are, have different sizes and we need, we have players that have different types of skills, whether it's, um, you know, shooting an outside shot or um, have, being agile or, or large in order to uh, leverage uh, the opportunities to score. Um, but not only diversity in size, <clears throat> we, we like a diversity um, uh, in where people come from because uh, that helps our teams get better. Um, somebody who's been coached in a certain way or under a certain coaching um, style uh, versus another person who's been coached a different way, when they come together and they learn how to play from each other um, uh, in our environment, they all get better. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed with our coaches and what we do, but I think that uh, the leadership that they show to their teams and, and, and bringing uh, people with differences together is really the biggest uh, challenge that they face. Uh, since summertime, we, um, uh, uh, we all know that there, there have been a lot of uh, movements uh, uh, having to do with Black Lives Matter after the um, uh, deaths that our country um, uh, had experienced uh, to, from police officers and um, how polarizing that uh, caused uh, uh, people across the country in their beliefs. Um, Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter versus, you know, um, Back the Blue. And, and um, uh, I won't go into any of my thoughts on that uh, uh, it, for this, but but what that we have noticed uh, within our athletic environment is that all of our students carry differing opinions on those types of things and um, reacted differently when uh, with all of that that was out there um, in social media and in the media. And um, uh, one of the biggest focuses uh, in the fall semester was uh, was doing um, team building uh, for teams who had uh, differing perspectives. And um, I learned a whole lot of, of, of information from, from all the different sides. And, and most people, I think, fall in, in, in the middle somewhere. Um, but uh, uh, the, the way people feel as they walk around and the way they feel on their team uh, definitely uh, differs based on um, uh, one's racial and ethnic identity. Um, if somebody comes from a minority uh, group, whether that's uh, um, based on their sex or gender, or um, uh, if it's a minority group based on ethnicity or, or race, uh, their race. Um, and it was interesting to hear some of the stuff that came up uh, from, from our athletes on their teams about what made them feel more comfortable versus less comfortable on, on these teams. And there were small things that the coaches uh, did uh, or didn't do that, that made, make the athletes um, feel like, like they belong and they have the same amount of voice. And like I said, if we want, if we take it, we want a diverse team because that makes us better at what, at what we do, which is competing. Um, and, but we want the, the, the people who come from these diverse backgrounds to have an equal say so that they can learn from each other and get better um, at their sport. And um, it was interesting to me to hear um, 
uh, certain athletes, um, a couple of our Native American athletes, uh, for example, uh, said uh, if, if they could do one thing to uh, help their families enjoy watching them play, uh, it, it would be to tell the announcers across our conference, especially from other schools, to uh, say their names properly without uh, saying, that's a really cool name, isn't it? So we have a basketball player, her name's Cola, and her last name is Bad Bear. And, uh, and uh, I notice now uh, that when I watch them play on TV, almost every time an announcer <clears throat> says Bad Bear is her last name, they say that's a really cool name um, or interesting name. And that might sound like a positive comment, but uh, what it's doing is it's pointing out a difference <clears throat> and by pointing out that difference, her family started to uh, not necessarily take offense, but get tired of hearing it over and over and over. <clears throat> and that affected how uh, she uh, uh, felt playing, that she stuck out a little bit. But, but mainly it was because her parents would tell her, you know, good job playing your game. They said it again and it became a thing. <clears throat> And no one said it was an awful name or, you know, why do Native American people have such strange names or anything like that? It wasn't negative, but it did make a difference in, in, in uh, how her family and then how she viewed being on TV, which if you think about it, if, if your mind has any little bit of it that's outside of, of the game, uh, it's going to influence how you play. And so maybe it was just a tenth of a percent, but there was a tenth of a percent of something that was impacting her, her play. Maybe it was a little bit more. Um, so those kinds of things, uh, those microaggressions um, were definitely alive and well uh, on teams. We, we had uh, uh, one of our students um, uh, call out in a nice way, one of our coaches, and they, he said, you know, when you, uh, when, whenever you're, you're, we're watching film and uh, you, you, uh, are come across a, a student of color and their name is hard to pronounce. You always call them by their, their number. But for all of the white people that were watching from the other team for their, for their uh, videos, uh, you always call them by their last name. And I know it's just because you're not used to saying it um, or saying those kinds of names, but it does start to, we start to notice that and wonder what, what's going on. And even though the coach wasn't doing anything intentionally and the students weren't taking it as like a direct offense, uh, it started to raise these questions in their minds that they probably didn't need to have because the coach was totally receptive to hearing that and decided that if he couldn't call everybody by their name, that he was gonna just call everyone by their number. Um, but but we, we do all of these little things on, on teams and, um, and that can uh, influence how the teams function together because we're all we're all people, uh, and we all come from different backgrounds. Um, and certain things get to get to one person, and other things don't. And and I think that uh, when it comes to team building, at least what I've noticed uh, with the athletes and 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 our teams. Uh, being able to talk about those things, um, being uh, able to have a, an environment where people can listen to each other, um, uh, being having leaders who are receptive to that kind of feedback really makes a difference. Um, when we have uh, coaches or people who are not receptive to, to feedback, to understanding um, how they influence the other people around them, um, then the student athletes uh, uh, don't feel comfortable uh, talking about things uh, that may be getting to them, um, and then they shut down. And when you have a team that's shut down, you have a team that's not getting any better or performing well together. Um, I think the same thing applies to any business situation. Um, when you have a, 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 a business or a group uh, where people feel open and able to share their opinions, uh, whether that's about uh, diversity or just a diversity of ideas um, when it comes to a business plan, uh, when people feel open to sharing those, then you really get the best feedback and your team functions the best. Um, uh, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to add along there. Um, 
You know, uh, I don't know if any of you uh, uh, out there have had a situation where like uh, uh, you have that kind of thing that's like a, a dripping faucet in the background. Uh, that's, uh, and, and, and the, the, what I'm talking about is like, you're trying to sleep at night and you have that one little tiny sound in the back that, that keeps you awake and it's just really annoying. Uh, when people have get those in their heads or when people experience something, uh, uh, then they have uh, their uh, guards go up to hearing more of that and to hearing more of that and to hearing more of that. And um, I think that that's the situation that we're all living in. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, people who come from diverse backgrounds, they have heard so many little comments like that name's really interesting or that name's really cool, or they've seen uh, somebody uh, who's of color be called by a number and um, other uh, people not uh, being called by their name, that they're hypersensitive and rightly so because they experience these things that we call microaggressions uh, so often and, and um, uh, throughout their daily life that they become an, accustomed to it and attuned to it. And um, I realized uh, that it's not about people um, being uh, soft or being snowflakes or, or our uh, uh, world around us needing to, um, uh, to be so gentle on each other and create these safe spaces. It's about understanding that the, Im the impact that the world and, and our environment has on other people. And, um, uh, you know, I may have thought that people were maybe a little overly sensitive about some of these things, but realize now that, um, you know, I have things that get under my skin and, uh, and, and things that affect me in my daily life. And, um, and when I see it, I recognize it and I'm like, there it goes, there it goes again. And um, in working with all of the students, uh, in, especially this last fall, um, I recognize that it's not about that extra sensitivity. It's, it's more because that's the environment that they're keyed into. Uh, it's for survival. They're trying to figure out if they can trust people um, and if they uh, can talk to people about the issues and the, and the needs that they have. And, um, and the reason why a lot of us do that is because we're trying to um, we're trying to analyze the situation so that we can thrive the best way we can. Um, so if, in, if there was any little uh, tidbit of advice based on kind of my work with all these different teams, um, it would be to um, recognize uh, yourself in the environment you're in, recognize the impact that you have on the other people around you and uh, read nonverbal body language. <laughs> Uh, nonverbal body language can tell you so much about the situation that's going on. Um, people tense up, people look away when they're uncomfortable, people become less engaged or they become quieter. And um, noting that and then asking if you've noticed a difference or asking if you notice some of those things is the best way I think you can really see somebody and hear somebody. And if you, even if you're wrong, it just goes to show that you're trying to understand who they are. <clears throat> and that understanding uh, breeds a healthier, better functioning team. Um, uh, I think that might be it in terms of, uh, in terms of what I have. Did you have any questions for me? No, uh, first of all, I, you know, your point about diversity, I think is really important because <clears throat> I learn from my students every year. It's not a one-way you know, stream. All my students bring different experiences and that's something I learn a lot from them. Um, and my students currently, they're learning about the environment for the uh, business they're creating for their business plan. But in reality, they're learning about the future where they're going to be an employee and probably at some point are gonna be a leader in their industry. And they need to do what they can to create a positive work environment. And I know myself having been a woman in STEM back in the early 80s, uh, speaking to our guest speaker from last week, that the li sometimes the little comments, the jokes, um, the asking us to go get coffee, <laughs> things like that. And people don't, it, it's not even something that people mean to do. It's just something they say, or they think it's a funny joke. 
but it can wear it on you when it happens day in and day out. Yeah. Um, and I think all of us want to create a good environment. Um, students are creating their organizational and staffing charts this week. And so they're thinking about how to create a good environment for their employees. Uh, they are a cohort for this two-year program, so they're going to see each other a lot. And so um, when we created class rules, one of the rules they created was to respect each other. And I think that's something that's very important. Mm -hmm. We may make missteps, all of us make missteps, but in the most part, we want to respect those we're working with because that's how we're going to have a healthy relationship. Yeah, Anything I, you want to add to that? No, you know, I like that because uh, I, I think that um, it's not about being perfect. Like I don't walk around in my life worrying about saying the wrong thing as long as I'm just trying my best <clears throat> and uh, checking the, and making sure that I say things with intention instead of just blindly saying things that I have heard in my upbringing or something like that. And and uh, and so uh, I don't walk around in fear of saying the wrong thing, but I do walk around um, with the idea that I'm that some of the things that I say just might be mistakes, and and that that I can learn from them, and um, and I think that uh, that's you know um, being sensitive to people who uh, who are different from us isn't about trying to get it perfectly; it's about trying to learn and try to do better. And um, and I think people understand that if you <clears throat> if you approach the relationship um, with a, a, with honesty, with a desire to learn, and also um, uh, uh, I think listening and, and hearing people, um, which are two different things, um, uh, they are is important and it goes a long way. Thank you so much, Aaron. I really appreciate <clears throat> you spending time with us.